Hello there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today we're going to make some faux stamped pyrography tags. Let's get going. The tag I'm going to show you today was almost in the Creative Holiday Tags class. And if you haven't heard about that yet, then please do see the information in the doobly-doo on how to enter to win a tag as well as how to get 50% off the class. But first, let's talk about what is pyrography. There's pyrography tools you need. You need a tool or they sometimes call it a pen that has a nib on it. And there's all different shapes of nibs. I'm still just starting to explore what these nibs do. But my kit came with two of these pens and holders they connect through this thing that you can adjust the temperature, the amount of heat that you use has different effects. And then you use this toggle button to point the heat toward one or the other. So they're not constantly heating. If the toggle is in the middle, then nothing is heating. So there is some safety here, so don't worry about that, but read the instructions for whatever pyrography toolkit that you get. But basically you use it like a pen and you draw with it. And here I'm just drawing on a, a little wooden ornament to make some pine cones and some, some fir boughs. Like I'm just practicing to see what these things do. So I wanted to share with you a, an easy pyrography ornament. So if you decide to get a pyrography kit, it's super easy to use stamps. And lots of my followers are stampers. So you're gonna have things that you can use. I'm gonna use a text stamp but you could trace around a snowman stamp or a Santa Claus stamp and make an ornament that way or a tag. These are little wood blocks that I got just at a craft store and you can get them in all different kinds of places, but you want something that does not have a coating on it. You don't want something that's already been sealed because you need to burn into the wood because this is heated up at a really good temperature. So don't touch the nib when it's hot. These do heat up and cool down really quickly with the set that I got. And in my mind, that's a really good feature to have. So look for something that heats up quickly and cools down just as quickly. But I'm tracing over the stamping that I had done and I stamped in a light color just so it would disappear if my lines weren't perfect. But you can see it gives you a rough edge. That's just what wood burning is. It, it's not going to give you a perfectly clean edge, but you can also draw with it without stamping. The stamp set from Sunny Studios has some little bits of holly and berries and leaves and things. So I decided to see what would happen if I draw some leaves in here. And I've sped this up a bit. And if you use the tool in a light fashion rather than going slowly, if you if you go really quickly, you can get a tint. So you can kind of color in an area and get that color in there and then go in and make your line work. So you can see how it, it can change the color by just moving quickly across the surface because you're not holding the heat on there. It's not getting a good chance to burn. And this tool has the ability to make lines if you actually use it as a line maker, kind of turn the tool in different directions and there are just a ton of tools. I'm just scratching the surface with this. So I wanted to distress the background because the tag was feeling a little plain. So I used that, that whole like light touch, really, really barely touching the surface and moving quickly. This is sped up in the video, but I moved really quickly across the surface so I could start to burn in a background. I wanted to make it really feel like wood because this is just a, manufactured machine type of tag. It's not really looking like gnarly wood and that was the look that I wanted. So you could stop where I've already finished it or you could go on and do a background like this. So I kind of knocked the color back so that I would have darker color around the edges and then drew in some wood lines. So as if there is a real wood grain in there instead of that really soft one that's been polished in by a sander, this, I wanted to make it look like it was all roughed up. After spending a little time on it, you can see it gives it a very rustic look to do this kind of thing to the background. 
and you can hold the burner on the edge and get it all distressed. And there's that kind of a procedure to make a pyrography tag. But how about if we were just going to stamp it? I thought about a couple ways to do this, one of which, of course, is to use inks. And I'm using some distress inks. And distress inks are water soluble. This one is vintage photo. So I'm going to use a paintbrush and some water. And I'm just going to paint over it because that's going to soften the edges. They're going to get a little squishy. And I'm leaving it in the MISTI, in the stamping tool, so that I'll be able to stamp over top of it when I finish this step. So you don't want to take it out. You're going to leave it in there. If you're doing this with blocks, it'll be a little bit tougher to line it up, depending on the complexity of the image. But if you have other ways that you can line up an image and make it align perfectly, then you could do it without having a MISTI. The second stamping is going to be with VersaFine Onyx Black. It's going to give it more of that wood burn look because you've got some of those soft, fuzzy brown edges coming out from outside of the Happy Holidays, but the black is going to give it that burned look. The holly and berries, there's a couple stamps in the set, and I'm starting off by stamping them in the brown and using the water to move that around a little bit so it'll lighten them and then stamping with the shadow stamps that are in the set so that I can get some difference in color. So I'll have some shadows on both leaves and on the berries, and that'll give it a little bit more oomph. Now, distressing the background on this one is significantly easier than the one that I did with the wood burning. So I'm gonna use a tool along with the distress ink and I'm just gonna lightly go around the outside edges. I'm gonna leave the center a little bit open because I want don't, don't wanna interfere with that. But if this tool that has felt on the end of it, if it starts to go over top of the image, it's not gonna hurt anything because we have that black pigment ink holding it still. So now I'm gonna use the actual ink pad itself to go around the edges and darken the outside edges, as well as letting the edge, just the very, very edge of that stamp pad go across the surface. And that's going to give it just a very light kind of look of wood grain. And it's really simple to do. You can do this on a piece of paper as well and create that kind of look. And if you get too much on there, use a baby wipe because this is water soluble distress ink and you can wipe some of it off. If you either get too much or you have one big giant dark line in there, you can soften that up real easily. And there we go. That's, that's the first step. Now, you can go in and do more work on these and make them even more interesting by finishing the edges and making them really look distressed. The pyrography one, I'm just gonna take the tool and go all the way around the outside edges. And you can do it lightly like I'm doing here. By the time I was finished, I decided I was really gonna go in and blacken them. And that's gonna take some time to do, but guess what, when you do this stamped one, you just take your black stamp pad and go around the outside edges, and that's going to very quickly make them into very dark edges. Bring the pad around the front a little bit if you want to bring that black more into the front and give it more of a frame around the tag. But then you're going to want to let it dry because it's going to be all over your fingers. <laughs> it is messy to do this with a pigment ink, but it's going to make the tag just really pop. Once you finish your tags, you can coordinate them with the gift wrapping. And there's sometimes it's gonna be real easy. This is green, it's gonna work well with having some greens from outside, and I found a branch that had a pine cone on it, so the brown ties into the tag itself, as well as the craft twine on it, and I've got them hooked on with an ornament hook. Sometimes there's a red paper you wanna use, and how do you tie that in when it doesn't look vintage? Well, I used a piece of brown to wrap around the gift, in addition. So that brings in the color, ties in the pine cone and the tag, and the red twine ties it to the paper. So it doesn't have to be a natural themed kind of paper in order to use a tag like this. And if you want more ideas on how you can coordinate your tags and your gift wrapping, that is one of the lessons in the Creative Holiday Tags class. So I would highly recommend going to check out that class Links in the doobly-doo for, as I said before, how you can get the class for 50% off, as well as qualify to win a prize. And I will see you guys again Friday with a little more 
pyrography, okay? I'll see you then.